I'm pretty obsessed with Kvike yeast. Most of my videos touch on my obsession with this glorious wonder yeast, and because of that, I get lots of questions about it. So let's answer some of your burning questions. Frank Steinberg asks a few questions about temperature control, which is a big conversation when it comes to Kvike yeast, asking, what do you think about temperature stability? Would a fermentation suffer from variability? Would it benefit from a stable controlled temperature, say 20, 30 or 40 degrees Celsius? Personally, I don't really worry when it comes to temperature stability with Kvike yeast. It's one of its great benefits that it really can handle very warm temperatures. You know, we're talking about 40 degrees Celsius, which would kill most yeasts, and it can also drop down to 20 degrees Celsius, if not lower. Despite the fact that Kvike can handle that temperature range, it does massively alter its flavor profiles when you do change the temperature. Lutra Kvike is quite a popular example here, because when it's fermented at a very low temperature, say 20 degrees Celsius or lower, then it really has a very neutral flavor profile. And so it works really well for lagers in those situations. Whereas if you had it a bit warmer, say 40 degrees Celsius, then you're gonna get a few more esters, which will not necessarily make the beer worse, but it will alter the flavor of it. So having a controlled temperature when it comes to Kvike yeast just gives you more control of the esters that you're going to get with the final product. That said, like I've said many times before, a great thing about Kvike yeast is that it can handle a huge temperature range and so you can ferment it at room temperature any time of the year, which is great when you're starting out home brewing and don't have the space, time, money or equipment where it comes to temperature control that's accurate. You don't really need to worry about accuracy with temperature control with Kvike yeast, especially if you're not trying to get consistently identical results with your brews. Jonathan G has some questions about bottle conditioning, so asking how is it for bottle conditioning? Is it super fast and do you need to condition it at higher temperatures? You can bottle condition Kvike yeast perfectly fine. It does in fact um, condition quicker than more traditional styles of yeast. I've had beer in the summer condition really fast, like five days or so. But if you want to, you can put the bottles where you would normally put bottles that condition and it will probably condition at around the same kind of speed, if not a bit quicker compared to other yeasts. When it comes to bottle conditioning Kvike yeast, there is another question which regularly comes up, which Chris Whitehouse has asked here. Chris asks, how do you get on with bottle carbonation with Kvike? All your beers seem well carbonated, but I have issues with bottling as it fluctuates so that there are some under carbonated bottles. Has this ever happened to your beers? Now I've seen a few videos where other people have had this problem and I'm always worried that one time I'll have a batch where for some reason my uh, beer hasn't conditioned and there is no carbonation. However, I've so far not had that problem. Some people use a fresh packet of yeast and pour a tiny bit into each bottle before adding the fermented beer to the bottles. I don't do that. Instead, I tend to, when I'm um, using an auto siphon um, from my fermentation to um, the vessel that I'm going to bottle from, um, I tend to just try and let just a little bit of yeast and trub come into uh, the vessel. And that allows me to, when I add the sugar, to give it a stir and it kind of makes a little bit of yeast go into suspension. And I've found that works for me. Um, I could just be lucky, but so far I've never had any issues when it comes to carbonating my Kvike yeast beers. They've always bottled conditioned. Um, but it is, you know, a concern for some people, but I don't think it's as big a problem as what some people might make you feel. Lyle Haunton asks, I know the main point of Kvike is to pump beer out super fast, but could I make, say, a double hazy Kvike beer and still dry hop it as needed? Of course you can. Um, now, I do go on a lot about the benefit of Kvike yeast being that you can sort out beer much quicker, that you can basically go from grain to glass within a week um, at times, or even quicker, some people have done. But that shouldn't be seen as resulting in worse beer than what you might get using other styles of yeast. It's just a very different type of yeast. 
it goes through rapidly, but that doesn't mean that you're getting bad quality beer. So it's no less of a beer. So pumping, sure, it is pumping it out, but that's not um, to the detriment of the quality of the beer if you're um, doing it right. So anyway, yes, you can dry hop Kvike beers in the exact same way that you would dry hop a beer um, done using other styles of yeast. So you could add the dry hop three or five days before um, you bottle. Something I like doing, which is becoming quite popular with Kvike yeast brewers, is that you can actually do something called a biotransformation dry hop. Now, a biotransformation dry hop is where you add your dry hop hops during high Krausen. So this could be within 24 hours of your initial brew. And then you get a really interesting flavor profile from the hops. It's very different from normal dry hopping. Um, and I've really enjoyed the results. You could also do a biotransformation dry hop and a more traditional dry hop with the same beer if you wanted to. Um, I've not done that, but um, others have with amazing results. So yeah, you can totally dry hop just in the same way that you would with any other style of yeast. White Rose AI asks, what is your take on Kvike across different beer styles? So I almost exclusively brew using Kvike yeast and I've made porters, I've made stouts, I've made Christmas ales, I've made lagers, I've made pale ales and all of them have been with Kvike and all of them have tasted like the styles of beer that I'm making. So yeah, you can use Kvike yeasts to make absolutely any type of beer. Different strains of Kvike will work better with certain styles. Uh, for example, I like using Kvike Voss beer when it comes to making beers that have um, a bit of an orange flavor to them if you want. So like, say with my Christmas beers, I have used Kvike Voss for them because Kvike Voss has a orangey flavor profile. Whereas Kvike Lutra, because it's quite neutral, it's really great for lagers, especially if you're fermenting at the colder range of temperatures with Kvike. And if you check out this next video, you can learn how to make a really lovely pseudo lager using Kvike Lutra.